Hey, welcome back, everybody. Can I get some hi guys in the chat, or hey guys in the chat? Uh, so we have Flipside Tactics and Complaint coming up very shortly, in like a matter of a few moments. Uh, yeah. Shalf, is you with me? Oh, yeah. No, I'm here. So I'm definitely here. I haven't gone anywhere. This has the potential to be the hypest matchup in a while. This could be extremely hype, absolutely. You know, I, it, it definitely comes down to, like I was saying before we went to break, this is Complain's big test. You know, I think this is the first time they've faced off against this version of Flipside. Full staff, full crew. They're, they're going in with the best team in the world. This is Mike, this is Marky, this is Kooksier. This is where stuff gets hard for any team involved. You know, it's very, it's going to be very difficult for Complain to get it together. But, you know, Complain has kind of come in here looking uh, pretty good. I mean, their performance so far, they did go a full five games against Swarm. I don't think that tilts too much, and the fact that they beat Swarm could make this really interesting. Because Swarm, you know, they're the number two. They're that team that's always banging on the door that flip si a flip side throne room, you know? They're, they're the ones who are always pining for that, for that throne, but they can't quite get there. Yeah, I... I this is uh, it this is one of those where I kind of low level wish that it kind of was just a winner like this is the grand final everyone pack it up and go home we do have more matches after this for the losers bracket uh, hopefully people can fight back up we'll we'll have updates on that as we go here uh, but as the teams are getting ready to come in we will we will get them up to go but I have a be I, I believe it uh, looks like Yemen. Give me, give me five minutes. I believe we're, I believe we're five minutes in. But hey, <laughs> it's all right, you know, because there's still plenty. It can kill five minutes, no problem. That's easy. <laughs> I mean, you know, just focusing on this game because obviously this is winner bracket final. Winner of this goes straight into the grand final. This is the easiest path to winning this tournament is to just keep winning. You know, and, and I don't know how many of, of you wonderful fans were here last week to watch that tournament. But you probably saw that, you know, when, when you get to the grand final, for anybody who's not totally familiar with the Rocket Royale double limb format, if you come up to the grand final from the lower bracket, you have to win twice in order to take out your opponent. Because the only way to be eliminated from Rocket Royale is to lose two series. So it makes it really tough when you get to the final for, for a lower bracket team. So this is great. If you can keep winning, and it looks like Flipside might do it, but this is going to be a good challenge for them. Once they get through, you know, whoever gets through is in a great position to just rock it the whole way. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Complain has a task on their hands with Flipside Tactics. Yeah, as, as we're getting ready to start it here, I'm, I'm really thinking, I'm starting to think more and more that it's going to end up being a, as we're getting ready to jump into the game here, this is going to be one where no one really knows what to think, right? We are, we're coming in, we're going to look at Yemen, but you have Marky, Mike, I, there, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of names and a lot of people in here that... This this can go anywhere. I, right out oh. of the gate, X3MW. Like before, I could even get words out of my mouth. Four minutes and fifty-one seconds left. We're not even ten seconds into the game. X3MW just decided, no, no. Let's make your decision pretty easy. Complain's gonna go up one nothing in the first game. This is how it's gonna go. Like that's, I, I, I really don't know how to how to react to any one thing happening in these games because everything can <laughs> can flip so quickly with these teams. I mean, you have it again. There, oh. There's. Ah, 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 like two nothing, four minutes, 43 seconds left. There's at least two more games coming. I very easily could play and can just make this 15 nothing. The next game, Flipside could just come out and score nine goals. And yeah, there's a lot. There is a lot that can happen in this series. I'm really curious as to what's going to go on. I mean, Shalfus, you have a lot more experience with these teams, with these players than I do uh, coming from. Granted, you don't live in EU. You just so happen to be conscious during EU time. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Able so, to cast is really the big takeaway. Yeah, I, I'm really curious as to how this is going to go. We have... Um, 
Like I said, Yemen is in here. Yemen is Yemen played very, very well in that first series that we casted. Uh, Yemen coming out, not really with any score yet. And there's Mike. So, Mike yeah, rules Mike with... Rules. To, to address a few quick things uh, while we're in the midst of all this goal scoring. <laughs> um, so, Dadu, replaced by the fourth member of Complain, which is JHZ, or, or JH, sir. I, I don't know exactly how you want to say that name. I assume when it's all capitalized, it's just, you know, you pronounce every letter. You know, you just have to yell it. It's uh, Jazzer! Like, just you yell, <laughs> oh, yeah. yell his whole thing. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, he is a member of Complain. He, he's the fourth member, so he'll tend to rotate in and out. So I guess that do out for this series. And uh, there's Mike, Mike again. It's the equalizer. So a few very quick goals came out by Complain. But you got Marky, you know who that is. You got Mike, you know who that is. Francesco, that's Kooks here. <laughs> but, uh,. So it's Jo it's Joni. Uh J H Z E R is Joni. So that is the That okay. is the name of the person on that team. And yeah, so I, I, yeah, the, this game it, literally the first four goals in this game happened less than halfway through the match, and it was two for each team. Like this is going to be an insane series. It is two yeah. EU teams that take that aggressive EU mentality to almost an extreme, to the point where like they're just they're hunting for as much aggression as they can find and trying to out aggress, um, try to out aggress the the other team. Yeah, and flip side is the best at that. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. You know, when it comes to that style, uh, I don't know if you're gonna say that they're the ones who pioneered it. I might even say they probably were because when they started playing this way, a lot of teams started to follow suit because really it was the only way to compete against it. Um, but they're the ones who kind of pioneered this very aggressive three forward style and you can see it kind of developing right now if you watch their, their their players when they go forward when they're not going back for boost or anything they're they're all up there all three players are on the other side of that that halfway line and that's the kind of heat they bring and there's now, a the level oh, oh sorry go ahead well i was gonna say there's a level of they know how far away they need to be from each other to still be competent there's if you're playing three or like three solo well there's a there's a goal from yemen it's gonna be kind of hard to keep and keep on top of a lot of this because it's gonna be so so fast paced. But yeah, you have knocking it up. That may have been the touch that actually scored it. I don't think he actually touched it again. No, actually, uh, it looks like Hooks here actually touched that a second time. Another note: um, everyone on flip side is actually playing with their real names. So yes. <laughs> that's that's happening. So it's Marky Duda, Mike Rules, and uh, and Cooks here. So yes, Cooks here. Of course, I mean Francesco is your typical third for flip side. This is the full complement. There are no subs here. Just uh, ignore the names. That's what I tend to do when it comes to uh, when it comes to flip side tactics. <laughs> Just ignore the names, because you never know exactly what names they're gonna decide to roll with in a tournament. But uh, they should just start. They should start picking Pokemon and just using those. Like, oh look, Blastoise is in this game. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know. They, they, <laughs> they tend to go with some very interesting names sometimes if you've watched them play in MLG especially. But uh, either way, I mean, you know. Right now, one thing I did want to mention, too, that you kind of have to be aware of when you're watching Flipside play is you can't gauge the, how they're going to play and what their performance is going to be like by game one of any series. They play very differently in game ones compared to how they play in subsequent games. They're looking great here, by the way. Yeah, and, and they use... But, Flipside always uses their first game in a series if it's more than a best of three. I've noticed that they tend to go super hype in a best of three, but um, in anything more than a best of three, best of five, best of seven, they tend to use the game one as a barometer of how is the other team going to play against us? Are they going to play into us a lot because we're so aggressive? Are they going to play a little bit more relaxed and, and try to get us to make mistakes? And they usually adapt to that. I mean, they're three, they're essentially three strikers that just know how to play defense as well. So it's a yeah. lot of adapting to, uh, to their opponent's play styles. And I think one big question I bet they ask is, what can we get away with? You know, they'll say, okay, what kind of stuff can we get away with on this team that we can capitalize on in further games? That's why you might see a fairly close game in game one. You might even see them lose a game one. But then they come back and just heat and heat and heat and they just look ridiculous. There's, uh, it, it seems like, and this again comes back to that, that over-aggressive play style, it's going to be a lot of people just barely being beat with that goal that just happened with just kind of getting edged out and the other team coming back and going, all right, well, we got to turn it up to 400% now, and then just coming back and scoring right again. I mean, this could, this is the potential to be the highest scoring series all that we have all day. It could very well be. 
You know, I think a lot of that will come down to how Flipside decides to adjust here. But oh, oh, what a save! Stop. That was a big equalizer. And there's X3MW with another knockaway. Actually getting pretty deep into the offensive zone. He's following it up. Yemen's knocking it into the corner. Is X3MW going to get be able to get behind it now? Mike and Marky are both there. Uh, but there again! And I, I know his name is not pronounced J-H-Z-E-R or Juzer or... I do not know how it's actually pronounced. But, because uh, I've only ever seen it in text form. But that is pretty insane, uh, being able to react as quickly as he does. Let me know in the chat how to actually pronounce that phonetically. Please, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> if there is this pun, but I, I think we... We'll just stick with Joni, I guess, for now. Is it Joni? Okay, it is Joni. Well, I know. Right. I don't know. It works out well, whatever. That's what the chat says, so we'll just stick with it. But, uh, yeah, good showing by Complain here in Game 1, and they probably will take this game. Um, just as Flipside is still kind of figuring things out, exactly what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, but maybe this is even, you know, Flipside's or, or uh, Complain's time to shine. And maybe they'll pull this off and, and really do something outstanding. Yeah, that, like I said, we, we mentioned it earlier, Flipside's not really all that worried about dropping the first game. They now know how Complain is playing this week, what their strategy tends to be. Um, rule one, looks like it's being abided by, and it looks like, uh, are they going to put in their own goal? Nope, it looks like they're going to let it drop, actually. Maybe not. <laughs> A little bit of rule one. Flipside does love playing their rule one. But, uh... There we go. That'll be the end of that. It was an end game anyway. So... There you have it. Game one will go to complain. But like I said, I, I don't use that as a barometer to figure out how flip side is going to perform. Yeah. I mean, they look they look as good as they're going to look in a game one, which is a uh, which is a weird thing to say. But it makes sense if you think about it in terms of flip side tends to hold back some of the stuff that they, they would be doing in a normal like, oh, man, we really got to win all these games kind of scenario. Yep. And we will see a little bit more of the actual flip side here. And there's Marky with a little floating shot that gets quickly turned aside. So, we sh I think we'll see as these players, as all three members of flip side, get where they need to get. I would say a squeeze just by Gux here, but at least Marky was back there to follow up on that. And yeah, they, They're good at that. They know where they need to be, and they always have somebody to kind of back them up on certain shots. Yeah, and that's uh, you see that a lot, even with the NA teams of going, "Hey, I'm going to take this riskier position." As Cooks oh, here <laughs> just was decided, he's just going to carry the ball, but uh, got uh, got blown away by by complain a little bit there. Uh, yeah, you have yeah. They, they take this riskier position and say, "Hey, if I miss this, at least I know someone's going to be behind me." Something you can't necessarily do uh, in solo standard, or, or if you're not playing in a competitive sense, if you're not playing with an actual team. Um, and there's a level of competence that, that that Flipside definitely has in that respect. And they'll play super and super aggressive positions. And Mike and Marky or, or Cooks here will always be there to back up whoever is standing forward. Oh, for sure. So, just good, good awareness of where they need to be and where they need to kind of position each other. And they don't have a lot of communication either. You know, that's the big thing. And that's something that actually Cooks here kind of speaks to a bit personally, you know. Uh, he did a recent interview on Rocket League Garage. Um... Oh, that was... Oh, oh. man. The follow-up. <laughs> the, the amount of touches Cooks here just had there. Uh, just in succession, accurately getting it to the net with no one there to finish, unfortunately. Uh, just speaks to how good he is on, on his own. And that, there's a lot of that in the EU. But no, he did recently do that interview on, uh, on Rocket League Garage at rocket-league.com. Yeah. And he speaks a lot about how it's a lot of individual skill. It's a lot of comfortability with the opposing play style or with your, oh. your, your team's play style. But there we go again with Yoni, or Joni. Yoni, Jazer, how do you want to call it? <laughs> Jazer. It does manage to just kind of juggle that back and forth to finally get that opening goal put complain on the board. So Flipside hasn't really flipped it over yet. They haven't really clicked everything together, gotten a lot of points on the board or anything like that, at least in this game. And we're not giving complain, I think, enough credit. They are a very good team. I, between oh. between Yemen and X3MW, I haven't seen so much out of Joni just yet. Or Yoni, I, obvi I obviously don't haven't seen very much. I don't know how to pronounce his name quite yet. And <laughs> here. Cooks here, and this again, this is to the extreme of the kind of goal I've been talking about earlier in, in this in this cast. It's he knows where the ball is coming from, knows where he has to turn his car, and know exact knows exactly where he has to hit it to get it to redirect in the goal with speed. 
in absolutely fantastical. Yeah, and that touches on the point I was going to make uh, about communication. Is In that interview, he talks about how they don't have a lot of communication. And that's something we've always kind of known if you follow Flipside. You know, the only people who are actively talking are Mike and Mark. You know, Kooksier does not talk during these games. They don't have that constant voice chat. A lot of it is just that synergy. They just know how each other play so well that they don't need that communication. And, and to be a really high-level team, and you, you think, like, oh, my God, they're so good and they don't talk. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And that's just the dynamic they have. They have that just synergy together. They know how they're gonna, what they're going to do and where they're going to do it. So they don't need to worry about actually having this open communication. Um, and that works out really well for them. Yeah, and it's, it's almost, and I, not to... Not to completely change the game topic, but it's almost that same uh, synergy that a lot of the professional MOBA players, whether it's Dota or League of Legends, your lane carry and your lane support will a lot of times have that synergy. They will communicate as a unit, but they don't necessarily need to communicate amongst each other because they know what each other is doing pretty much at all times without really having to talk about it. Yeah, you know. And that's why if you ever tune into a flip side stream and they're in the middle of playing a competitive match, you know, you might hear Mikey and Mark talking about anything but the game. <laughs> but, oh, there's a big opening for Flipside. And they Mark, Mark he had to sit on that because he knew that everyone from Complain was sitting there in front of him. Uh, but he wasn't able to get anything to go because they were able to knock it away, unfortunately. And their Cooks here coming in and actually knows where it's going to go back in. What oh, a redirect. That was gorgeous. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> knew. He knew what he had to do. I he came up, from a little closer up. This touched is it, knocks it, knows exactly where it's going to go again, and managed to get get it right around Yoni, uh, pretty easily. And that's that's a that's a comfortability thing. I say it a lot whenever someone gets two taps or three taps off a wall, knowing how your car is going to react uh, with boost, with the way the, with the with the way that the ball is reacting, uh -oh. and that's a pretty easy that's a pretty uh, open goal for them as well. Let's yeah, take a look at that from a, the top that's though. That's a heartbreaker here. <laughs> look at this, just. Uh. Ooh, Everybody's out of position, goes the distance, gets a big go-ahead goal, probably the insurance goal here for Flipside to take their first game in this series. So that could be enough for them to kind of own the rest of this match. Yeah, at least with this a, particular game. With a minute left, Complain's going to have to do uh, get pretty hype pretty quickly. Uh, and, and with Yemen knocking it back into the zone, I was going to say it looks like it looked like Cooks here was going to knock it all the way out of the zone, but he did not. Because uh, Yemen was there to keep it in the zone. If they can keep a little bit more pressure, and they still have just under a minute to score two goals, but if they can't keep it in front of the net, they're not going to be able to get their shots in. Yeah, so so I do have some confirmation kind of going forward. Uh, it is Jazer. Jazer. Like laser, but with a J. So. Okay. Jazer. All right, so that's the way we'll pronounce that. Um, but, yeah, right now, like you said, I mean, everything's just kind of going together nicely for flip side. They might even get one more here. Uh, pretty good defense, though. I mean, I'm Oh, say, open really net. Going. Oh, yeah, man. You but can't no, expect it to be accurate, but there's X3MW. You can't expect Yemen to be accurate from that far away, but to be able to set it up pretty easily, X3MW's there, and Cooksier wasn't able to knock it in. X3MW just giving it a love tap with his wheels, pushing it in. Could be enough time for them to tie this game up. 14 seconds is plenty of time to score a goal, plus whatever zero second time is left, of course. But, oh, nice stop by Jazer. Keep an eye on X3MW here, who's going deep into the zone. Cooks here knocks it up, still in the air, so we do have zero second time, and it is in the zone. Looks like it's coming back out. That might actually call it game, though. Yep, there it is, yeah. game. So that's 1-1. One, one. Right. Still, good showing out of both teams yet again. A very close matchup. Um, you know, complain, trying to bring everything they have in this series to, uh, to really take it forward, and it looks like Cooks here. Is going to need a bit of coffee to, to recharge and stay energetic, I guess, in this matchup. But um, just to kind of touch on that, I mean, it, it's, it's looking really solid um, for, you know, for, for both of these teams. So I'm pretty impressed with how everything's coming together thus far. I, you know, I, I like this series. I like where things could be headed here. Here's This is a really good indication. And they're an EU team, but if you look at Orange, who is, in fact... Um, flip side, they don't take indiv individual roles, but we have Cooks here with three goals, Mike rules with three three assists, and Marky kind of taking everything else, right? He has two saves. Granted, Cooks here has two saves as well, but 
I mean, hey, they're they're not playing, they're not playing the, uh, they're not playing individual, they're not playing individual like roles or anything, but um, yeah. they are at least falling into the thing that they're most comfortable with. Yeah, and you'll tend to see that on like a game by game basis, um, but it changes a lot. So, you know, you can't look at one game and be like, oh, this guy clearly plays a little more defense than offense, or this guy clearly plays a little more offense than defense. That might be the way they played that game. But you go into another game, like, like that previous game was probably dominated by Kooks here. You know, right. He was the one who was coming out looking strong. You go into this next game, and it might be Marky, who comes out and scores, you know, a boatload of goals. Oh, look at this beautiful setup. Oh, there's Cooks. Oh, oh what a save. W. What a huge way to stop that. That was a gorgeous setup there for Flipside, but it was turned away. We're gonna take a look. Still on though. We're actually gonna take a look at Marky from my end here, and it looks like he's been. And I said this in the first Rocket Royale that I casted. He is the player on Flipside that is kind of the the keystone. If Cooksier is the flashy goals guy, Marky is the guy that's going to be literally all over the place as Yemen comes in and scores. Just so happens to beat Marky and Mike. Um, Marky tends to be the one who is setting things up. He's the one that's actually getting touches on the ball. Uh, Yemen, Yemen and... Uh, yeah, Yemen and Jaser kind of both winning on that, and Yemen just beat him to the punch to right. get that opening goal. So good start. Four complain. And, the 50-50 uh, uh, the on the kickoff, they both kind of do the exact same thing, so shot directly off into the orange side. And it looks like Cooks here... Cooks here is trying his hardest to play over the top of complain, which I think is something that you need to do if you wanna if you wanna beat them on a regular basis. There's Mike Rules oh, ah, just wow. barely, just barely getting enough on it. Let's actually jump out and see it from here. If you see where Mike is actually coming in, he knows where everyone's coming from and kind of just touches it in a way that it's gonna push it down uh, into the uh, push down into the corner of the net. Yeah, that was a just a beautiful little place. I mean, you see that quite a bit, too. Just put that little bit of touch on it, just enough to redirect it slightly. It probably slows the ball way down, too, and it tends to just kind of trickle into the net, but it's just enough. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what we're seeing so far right now is Flipside is just putting on so much pressure. Like, they're constantly keeping the ball on the blue side, and it's only coming through a little bit here and there. Fortunately for Complain, the one time that it did break through was enough for them to actually score, and they're doing a good job of Oh, whoa. But we, had, we had glowing ball. We had it in. We had it past the... We had, had it past the plane of the goal, but it looked like uh, like Marky was actually knocking it back out, yeah. All right, so a bit of ping pong going on right now, just trying to keep the ball in center. And you're going to see, see that a lot with aggressive teams, though, right? Like, they're going to try to keep it into the zone... But the other team's also going to try to be getting out of their zone as fast as possible. So it's going to be a lot of bouncing back and forth and trying to get it to a position where the ball's actually set for a decent shot. But it uh, looks like we're going to be looking at quite a few different things. Yeah, yeah we, you got that right. I mean, when it's two aggressive teams who are going at it, that's one point you'll start to see happening in the game is just that back and forth, back and forth. Um, and that'll happen because they're trying to find the right bounce, I think, or, or get the right setup. And that can be very hard against two teams that are skilled at being aggressive. Right. You know, and that's again, where the problem comes in. And two teams that are really good at diffusing offensive strikes. So they have to do that, which, which is what Cooks here and a lot of, uh, and what Yemen are doing, is playing up over the top. And there's a lot of that. Um, you notice there's going to be way less of, oh, I'm going to roll this into the corner and hope it pops up over in front of the goal, which is something you see happen a lot in your solo queue or your standard play. Um, but in competitive, it's a lot of, we have to carry this ball in on, on my roof through the air just to get it in front of the net. There's a really good shot oh. from distance by Mike, but diffused pretty yeah. easily by Yemen and, uh, and Jazer. All right, looks like Flipside has cracked this back and forth a little bit. They're starting to apply the pressure pretty consistently now, at least for the moment. Oh, here's a good opening for Kooks here. Tried, I knew he had to follow up with that little touch, but X3MW manages to stop it. Oh, a nice attempt to center for Kooks, but nobody was there to actually follow up on it. Mike didn't have enough power on that, so it allowed it to stay in the offensive zone, but it did hit it back into Markey, who was able to knock it back out pretty quickly. Oh, risky uh, center there. Fortunately, nobody was there to do anything with it. We'll call it a pass to Yemen, but I don't think he was ready for it. <laughs> <clears throat> Plays are developing pretty well here for Flipside so far, but they're having a hard time getting a good finish on it. Yeah, and, and Complain has been there to actually oh. defuse them, and there's... 
Jazer, again, just putting it into the net as we've been seeing quite a bit today, especially from Complain. I mean, in the first round, we had them doing quite a lot of that. And open net, hey, why not? Let's not make a risky shot. Let's not let it actually go up too high. Uh, let's just roll it in. Tap it in. Tap, tap, tappy. Yep, and now, final minute of play. Broke that tie, so that's a big go-ahead for Complain here. They, they really would love to go up 2-1 here against Flipside. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, in the series, I should say. They're for obviously sure, yeah. 2-1 in the game. Yep. Uh, so we're going to be looking... We're actually going to jump over to... Uh, to Cooks here and see exactly what what his plan is here, trying to get to the end here. It looks like oh, oh Mike, Mike risking sacrificing himself to prevent the 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 go or the the ceiling goal, not the go ahead goal. They're already ahead. Yeah. That would have been insurance right there, but fortunately it was stopped. So now, flip side. One thing they do very well is play cut clutch Rocket League. They are they're a very good clutch team, and you will see them pull off some big goals late in the game. When they need it the most, maybe. Not always, but that's a big thing that they're pretty good at here. So if they can find a hole. There's Mike. Marky redirect. Oh, what a goal from Marky. Let's take a look at this from Mike's perspective, though. Mike's setting it up. I don't know if he ca we were going to call that an actual pass, but as Marky gets it and it just kicks itself all the way over it, I don't think Complain was ready. So we may be going to an overtime here, depending on the uh depending on the outcome of the overtime okay okay never mind depending on the outcome of zero time wasn't no, even wasn't no even off the ground down. that ball yep. was on the ground when the clock <laughs> ran down but here we go so quite a few things can happen here oh cooks here can just completely happened? block everything oh man so yeah. cooks here knocks it off the wall <laughs> Jazer is there to knock it back, but Cooks here realizes what's happening and just pushes it right back in. Just doesn't even... Up, up, we don't even need an overtime. Let's not have overtime. We'll, we'll be in here for a second, but uh, let's, not, let's not deal with it. That just, was... was what a shot. Say, clutch mode was still on for Flipside. That clutch mode hadn't turned off. And clearly, you see Cooks here with some ridiculous play coming off the wall and just catches his own little rebound off that shot. I mean, come on. It's just Air, ridiculous. Air Cooks here. He has his own line of shoes coming out uh, with the amount of dunks. With the amount of dunks that just happened. Oh, man. That counts. I think that counts as two goals. Granted, he only needed one to win the game, but, oh, man, that was insanity. Air Cooks here. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, but this is, uh, this is going to be interesting stuff. So... Deciding match here for uh, flip side. Match point for flip side at least. Yeah. They can win this one and then secure their place in the grand finals. But complain, I'm sure, would love to force a game five here. They're gonna have to change up a few things, and I think one of the biggest things is the amount of pressure. Um, they're gonna have to spend more time in flip side's area. Oh, oh, just a little bit high. Oh, but here comes the follow-up. I mean, right now we're seeing Flipside still playing their game. Pressure is on for them. They're putting it in the blue zone as much as they want, getting tons of opportunities. One thing Complain did really well was the few chances that they did get, they took advantage of very well. Right. That's that. Flipside just spent a ton of time. That is just sitting in front of the goal for years. Oh, my goodness. Give the ball a tent and a sleeping bag. It can just hang out in front of the goal as much as it wants. That was insanity. They almost had to file for eviction paperwork. It was there that long. But <laughs> the squatter ball. <laughs> exactly. That ball had tenants' rights at that point, but fortunately it was cleared out. I mean, I, I'm really glad that we got this series, and I'm glad we got these two teams playing. And, and this has been just excellent for complain. Even if they drop this game, you know, even if they lose here, they, they have not looked dominated. <laughs> uh, there's Mike. Roll in goal. Just, not, not just pack it up. This was a little bit of that smash mouth punch in the face style that we saw happen to Gibbs earlier. I mean, look at this back and forth. Oh, back yeah. And, forth, and Mike's just like, no, no, I'm going to put it in. <laughs> shut up. And he does manage to do it. It's the, whole, it's the whole feeding a baby, right? Here comes the airplane. No. And then you just, event, you just, you just push it in past their lips because the, their mouth is right behind their lips anyway. Like, uh, It's going in. But uh, I was going to say, even if Complain loses this series, even if they drop this game and they're, they're you know, going to the lower bracket, they have looked 
just excellent. There's Mike again, possibly, but no, it looks like Jazer actually yeah, uh, defuses like that pretty huge, easily. Huge save. Looked fantastic. Yep. But, uh, yeah, they have not been dominated by Flipside at all in this series. They've held their own every chance that's gone around, but the play has just been a little bit better for Flipside in these last couple games. You know, the constant pressure is a big thing in there. Oh, oh Mike just keeping it just outside of the zone, but Yemen is there. Jays are knocking it back into Yemen. I would assume they were trying to do that for some sort of pass, but it looks like maybe yeah, not really a whole it looked, lot happened. Mike was coming in, but I think he was just bouncing in a weird way, and he couldn't quite get the position on the ball he wanted. He was in a great position to put that in. It was a wide open net. Speaking oh, of that, what a the pass from Cooks here to X3MW. Flip side complain confirmed. Oh man, just knocks it down. Not hard enough of a touch, and X3MW puts it right in. Yeah, that kind of play off the wall is so risky. You know, you try to do that to hopefully set up for your teammates, and that, that's generally what they do. You'll see that happen for Flipside a lot. Like, most times you're going to say, don't pass like that off the wall in your own zone. That's crazy. But for Flipside, they know what they're doing, and they, they generally can do that successfully. But if they're not, if you're not careful, man, your opponents can very easily take advantage of that. And speaking of that, ball was centered again, but they do manage to clear it out. And, I mean, we're tied up. We're halfway through the game now. Still, though, Flipside is putting on more shots toward net, on net, from what I can see so far. It's just that Complain is making their appearances in the offensive zone count a little bit more. Which technically is a good thing for Complain, it's just they need to be getting in the zone more often. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that that is the reason that these games are so close, but also the reason that they're still being lost. You know, they're not doing enough. Like, if we look at, this, if, at the line so far, there's been five shots on goal for flip side, and that's just shots directly on goal that the game counts. That doesn't count all the shots toward the goal that we're right. seeing. Oh, right. And so, okay, now we're up to six. Six shots on goal for flip side, three for complain. So that difference there. Oh, that's really a high up <laughs> shot that might go in. <laughs> X3MW knocking it away. It looks like it was going to bounce up the crossbar anyway. Hate to interrupt. But that was a pretty decent looking shot. Oh, there's Jazer. Oh, what a save from Cox. Just comes out of nowhere every time. I, I swear to God, every time you see a save out of nowhere for Flipside, it's, it's Cox here. Save. Yeah, every time. He's like, I got it at the last possible second. There goes Marky oh, trying to get yeah. it out, but that forced, the, that forced the shot to be a little bit high. I will count that as a true save in, the, in Marky's favor. Marky getting up there, just getting the touch on it, keeping it in the outside of the zone. There's Yemen. Trying oh. to center it, but it looks like from the, from a distance. Oh. Cooks here. Sniper tactics. Hashtag sniper tactics for the win. Look at that. Yemen tries to center it up for Jazer, but just Cooks here gets to it. From just, just downtown. Like, yeah, there. Different area code. I just, uh, Just from, yeah. Yeah, you can't. Short of scoring from your own goal, there's not really much further away you can get unless you're just shooting two here on DFH from Manfield. Like, you can't can't get too much further away. In the mail and send it to another pitch. I mean, that that's just some superb long-distance shot. And that's just picking your moments. It's seeing how your opponents are trying to set shots up and just taking advantage of it. And Mike rules there. Big critical save here late in the game to preserve a very, very narrow lead. You know, sometimes one-goal leads are big, and sometimes they're really small. And here, it, it's a little of both. <laughs> it's a big lead this late in the game, but it's so tiny that it can very easily be turned around by complain. But if they don't do so really soon, they, they go into the bracket. Oh, it's speaking. Oh, of wide <laughs> open goal. Uh, that's the problem with the style that Flipside plays. They commit a lot. I think that was actually a bit of a mistake. Both Mike and Marky committing Both the fell out. Side. Wow. So that's 2-2. Two, two. That's probably going to force it overtime uh, for a complaint who is very close to being in the loser's bracket here very shortly. And Marky just out of the gate. What even happened here? That's why I said maybe because you can't rule out the clutch play just of barely back. beats Jazer. Oh, oh man that is such a that clutch so is not even the word it's just it's it, shot uh, man, it's, when the ball gets shot up to the ceiling like that it's going to come down at such a hard angle in a weird place 
and he just knew exactly where it was and where he had to position himself to redirect it. Complain keeping it alive all the way in the zone. Is it going to get knocked down? Okay, that's it. That seals it up for Flipside Tactics. They are moving on to the grand final. They indeed are. And holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, that, that is it. Yeah, man, that is it. Series done. Flipside Tactics going to the grand finals. Complain for the second week in a row. They are going to the loser's bracket. Now they're going to have to... Uh, You're in the ugly bracket <laughs> now, according to Marky. <laughs> they are. I mean, you know, it is a bit ugly. It takes a lot of effort to get through that bracket. So you, you got to fight dirty, you got to fight ugly, you got to fight rough to uh, actually get through.